Hey there, uh, welcome back. So today we're gonna be adding these blank spaces into our board here. So um, you can break out a piece of graph paper and make some really interesting looking designs. So let's dive right in and get that started. Okay, so where we left off last time, we have our game where if we swap two pieces and it's not a match, they swap back, and we can still swap to make matches anywhere on the board. Um, columns collapse, they refill, they automatically detect matches, collapse and refill again until there's no more matches on the board. So what we're going to do today is start adding some of what I call the fun stuff. Uh, one of the things that makes Candy Crush really interesting is almost none of the boards are just flat rectangles like this. Instead, what you get are these blank spaces that make the board kind of turn into these patterns or allow for some really interesting uh, twists to the regular old match three formula. And that's what we're gonna be adding today. So let's uh, get started. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is go into our grid script here. And the main idea behind this, let me actually play this again just so I can show you. The main idea behind this is that we want to have um, something that holds information about which of these spots we want to be empty. So we're going to need to have a or an array of vector two objects, and each of those vector two objects is going to represent an empty spot on the board. So, for example, if I made an array of zero zero um, seven zero, and this would be uh, zero nine and then this would be 7, 9, and that would leave me my four empty corners. Now, in Candy Crush, they have typically much more than just four empty spaces. Typically, they are places. Typically, they have between uh, 20 and 25 empty spaces. So we're going to take a look at how to do that. So essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to create an array of vector 2s that we can set in the editor. And by setting it in the editor, it allows us a bunch more flexibility then when we're filling the board we're going to check any one position versus that array and if the position we're checking is in that array we won't generate a piece there so that's the main idea array of vector twos when we fill the board check that position versus that array if there's a match don't fill so let's dive in uh, first thing i want to do i've got my grid variables here i'm going to make a new little section and I'm going to call this uh, maybe obstacle stuff. And in here, I need to be, or not, I don't need, but I want to be able to set this in the editor. So I'm going to call this export pool vector to array. And I'm going to call this var empty spaces. All right, cool. So if I save my scene really quickly here, go out of distraction free mode, go back and look at my grid, I now have this empty spaces here. I can choose vector two, array, it asks me for the size, and I'm going to go with eight. And my indices. So now these are all just zero, zero to start out with. I'm gonna make one zero, zero. I'll make another one seven, zero. I'll make another one, zero, 09. Another one is going to be 7, 9. So that's the four corners. And I'm going to have four in the middle as well. So I'll do uh, 3, 4, and 4, 4. And we'll do. Um, three, four, let's do three, five, and four, five. Okay, so, so far nothing's really happening with this. I just have my array of pieces that I want to be empty. So I'm going to go back to my grid script here really quickly. Now, the empty spaces aren't the, or the empty spaces aren't the only ones that restrict your ability to move pieces into and out of that area. Uh, there's also the licorice tiles that allow you not to move the piece that's under the licorice tile or the piece next to it into there. Uh, there's the concrete tiles, which uh, essentially, until you destroy them, act just like a blank space. 
and the chocolate tiles, which also act like a blank space. Or I guess not concrete, I call it concrete because that's the spread I made, um, icing tiles. And Candy Crush, it's icing. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have a little function that I'm going to call um, maybe check non-movable, something like that, to check to see if a given position is in any of those non-movable places rather than just checking the empty. So I'm going to call this function check non, yeah, I want to non-movable. And this is going to require a um, column in a row. So column row. And what I want to do in here is I want to go through first all the empty pieces. So check the empty pieces. And I want to go for I in empty spaces dot size. So checking all the empty spaces. I want to say uh, if empty spaces I. So I want to check to see if that particular spot in empty spaces is equal to vector2 column row. And I can actually make this a little simpler in just a second here. If that's true, then I'm going to return true. And if I can go through that without having that turn true, then I'll return false. Um, since I'm going to be, then I'll just kind of repeat this with the icing tiles and uh, licorice tiles and the chocolate tiles, because those are all the ones that restrict our movement on the board. So, well, maybe I should call this restrictable movement or restricted movement. Yeah, let's call it that. Restricted movement. All right, cool. Um, so we've got our, yeah, and the one thing I said that I can do to make this simpler is uh, I could pass in the vector 2 to begin with. So I guess might as well, oops, sorry about that. Might as well pass in the vector 2 to begin with. I'll call this um, place. And instead of doing column row, I'll just compare it against place. Okay, cool. That's much simpler. Now I can get rid of my pass. So when I'm spawning in my pieces, um, I'm going to do for i in width and for j in height. And before I choose a random number, I want to make sure that it's not uh, a restricted movement place. So uh, if not restricted movement vector to i, j. Uh, if that is true, then I can do all this other stuff to create the pieces. So I'll grab all of these lines and tab them over and cool so that's part of it now there's more to it than this but let's just see what i've done and just how much i've broken it all right cool so i got my empty spaces now watch what happens next there we go so automatically when it uh, went to detect to see if it should refill anything or rather if the column should collapse it detected all those empty spaces and collapsed the columns and then it refilled everything and now I'm back to a regular old boring board. So to fix this, uh, I'm going to go take a look at my collapsed columns routine. So if I go down here to look at collapsed columns. So uh, I'm checking to see if all pieces ij is null. I just want to add an extra check to this. and. Um, I want it to be something where uh, it's something that I want to fill in. So I'm going to say not restricted movement vector 2 ij. And then I'm not going to collapse the columns. So let's hit play. We're still not quite there. I'm going to swap pieces. So it collapsed the columns just fine, but it refilled where it wasn't supposed to. So now we need to look at refill columns. So if all pieces ij is null, and uh, we're going to do the same check that we did here, not 
restricted movement vector two i j. Uh, okay, cool. So just save my scene really quickly here. Let's hit play. And now if I swap my pieces, there we go. Cool. It acts just like you would expect it to. So I can still swipe my pieces. Things fill in. If I swipe here underneath that block, things collapse like you'd expect them to. It's not exactly the same way that Candy Crush does it. Candy Crush has this interesting physics system where it, it funnels pieces down. And I think this is enough for us to kind of get the idea. Um, I certainly don't want to go into exactly everything that Candy Crush does because they spent years perfecting that formula and I ain't got that kind of time. Um, <laughs> but this gives you a good idea of what you can do to get yourself started. So we've got these empty pieces here. Now next time, we're going to be adding tiles that are similar to the jelly tiles, where uh, it doesn't restrict the movement at all, but if you break a piece underneath it, um, you'll do some damage to it and maybe take it away. And then that can factor into some level goals that we'll add further down the line. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. And you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post a new video. Uh, you can join my Discord, where I'm chatting pretty much every day. And yeah, have yourselves a wonderful day.